Hello, today I'm going to be reviewing the latest case from Lian Li. It's the O11 Dynamic Evo RGB. And this case is available from today in both black and white. The black version will set you back $159.99 US dollars, while it's an extra $10 for the white version. And Lee and Lee really has been keeping me busy over the past few months with all the cases that they have been releasing. And this isn't just a simple thing that they've just added RGB light strips to the top and bottom. There is a whole host of improvements that they have made to this case. But is it enough to justify an upgrade? That's what we're going to be finding out in this video. So let's take a closer look at the case. To remove the tempered glass side panel, it's just a simple matter of pulling it out from the top and then it can be lifted up and away. And once you remove the tempered glass side panel, you're able to remove the tempered glass front panel in the same way. Again, our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. Pull it out from the top and lift it up and away. Take a look at the back of this side panel. You'll notice we have two areas of perforation there for your side fans and radiators, as well as your power supply. You'll notice that there's no separate dust filters and Lee and Lee are going with just mesh on the case. To remove our top panel, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back of the case to loosen. The panel can then be slid backwards and lifted up and away. The case's one only dust filter is down at the bottom and Lee and Lee have improved this dust filter compared to the original O11 Dynamic Evo by adding a plastic frame. This one is still magnetically attached and it's just a simple matter of pulling it away. So the case gets its name from the RGB lighting bar that runs the full length of the front and the side of the case, both at the top and at the bottom. You're going to be able to control these ARGB lighting strips using the case's built-in controller and we've got some buttons on the side of the case to help you do this. Also, if you plug the case's ARGB cable into the motherboard, you can hold the mode button in for three seconds to sync the ARGB lighting strips up with your motherboard's lighting control. The only thing that's a little bit disappointing is there is no additional ARGB headers which would have allowed you to plug additional things into the case's controller. So the only thing you are able to control with the case's buttons is the actual ARGB lighting strips. Out of the box, our I.O. module is down at the bottom at the front and includes two USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port and a combined headphone and microphone jack. Like with the original O11 Dynamic Evo, it is possible to move this I.O. module to either side of the case or Lee and Lee do offer an additional I.O. module kit allowing you to expand your case's I.O. Like with some of Lee and Lee's other recent cases, the front pillar is fully removable. In terms of fan support, at the bottom, the side and the top, you're going to be able to mount up to three 120 or three 140 millimeter fans, while on the rear of the case, it's up to a single 120 millimeter fan. If you pick up Lee and Lee's optional mesh front panel for the case, you are going to be able to mount up to three 120, three 140 or two 160 millimeter fans on the front of the case. In terms of radiator support, at the bottom and the side of the case is up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator, while at the top of the case it's up to a 420 millimeter radiator. Mounting your fans and radiators is going to be fairly straightforward, with removable fan stroke radiator brackets at the bottom, on the side, and at the top. The removable bracket at the top has been improved based on user feedback from the original O11 Dynamic Evo, which required the bracket to be removed from the case to allow you to mount fans and radiators to it. In the O11 Dynamic Evo RGB, you can actually mount your fans and radiators without removing the bracket if you wish. And if you do want to take advantage of the maximum cooling potential this case offers and mount a 420mm radiator at the top, there's two additional brackets that allow you to mount this in the case accessory box. With a side fan stroke radiator bracket in its default position, you've got 83.2mm of space in the main compartment for your fans and radiator, and 30mm of space in the second compartment. If you reverse this bracket round, it now sits flush with the back of the case in the second compartment and you've now got 113.7 millimeters of thickness for your fans and radiators. In terms of motherboard support, the case is compatible with motherboards up to EATX in size and although we've got absolutely loads of options for water cooling in this case, if you do want to go with an air cooler, the maximum height supported is 167 millimeters. If we take a closer look at the standoffs at the back of the case, you'll notice that we've got two different height options for mounting your motherboard. By default, the motherboard is mounted in the low position, where you've got 25 millimeters of clearance at the bottom of the case and 103.5 millimeter clearance at the top. It is possible to move the motherboard up to the high position by moving all the standoffs up. And at the back of the case, there's a little plastic clip on the I.O. cutout, which simply pulls out, rotates around 180 degrees, and then slides in at the bottom. The main reason for doing this is to improve your clearance at the bottom of the case, which in the high position it increases to 45.3 millimeters. The downside of this is you reduce the clearance at the top of the case to 83.2 millimeters. 
In terms of graphics card support, at the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets, and the case is compatible with graphics cards up to a maximum length of 455.7 millimeters and a maximum width of 169 millimeters. If you mount your GPU in the horizontal position, it's going to be really well supported in this case with the included anti-sag bracket, and there is options for mounting this both with an ATX and an EATX motherboard. The case is compatible with Lian Li's universal four-slot vertical GPU kit, and also their upright GPU bracket. And I did find mounting the graphics card in the upright position was a little bit easier in this case compared to the original O11 Dynamic Evo. Before we move into our second compartment, I want to point out that we've got large rubber grommets covering all the cutouts through to the second compartment, all the way around our motherboard. Moving into the rear compartment, and in the middle of the case, we've got a magnetic cable covered door, which can simply be opened up. On this cable covered door, you are able to mount up to two, two and a half inch drives. And as well, over on the side, if you're not planning on mounting fans and radiators, you are able to mount up to a further four, two and a half inch drives or two, three and a half inch drives. The drive mounting options don't stop there. At the rear of the case, we've got two individually removable hard drive cages. In each of these drive cages, you're going to be able to mount either one, two and a half inch or one, three and a half inch drive. As you'd expect, coming from Lian Li, cable management in this case looks to be really straightforward. We've got Velcro cable straps at both the top and the bottom of the second compartment, as well as the central cable raceway with Velcro straps at the top and at the bottom. In the middle of the raceway, we've got a metallic clip, which is designed to help manage your bigger cables, like your power supply cables. And on the front of this, we've got some Velcro cable straps to manage your smaller cables, like your case cables and fan cables. Your power supply is going to go down at the bottom, and the case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 220 millimeters. You'll notice that both our power supply bracket and hard drive cage at the back of the case protrude from the back of the case by 15 millimeters, and this is designed to improve your power supply compatibility without taking space in the middle of the case, giving you more space for your cables. You've got two options for mounting your power supply in this case. You can simply slot it into the bracket where it is, or for an easy mounting experience, the power supply bracket is removable. There's two screws on the side and two at the back, and then you're going to be able to fix it to your power supply outside of the case. Taking a look at the back of our power supply bracket, you'll notice we've got two cable tie-down clips. This is designed for helping you manage the cables coming out from your motherboard and your graphics card. Like with the original 11 Dynamic Evo, this case also supports reverse mode, and by simply moving a few things about, you can completely change the orientation of the case with your motherboard and graphics card being inverted. And this is going to be perfect if you just want a completely different looking build or if you're planning to put your PC on the left hand side of the desk. So what I want to do now is give you a closer look at the build I put together in the case. So taking a look at our temperatures, our 7800X3D have been cooled by the 360mm AIO at the top set to exhaust, idled at 39 degrees and reached a maximum of 81 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. Our RTX 4080 idled at 28 degrees and reached a maximum of 62 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, we have an average noise of 33 decibels at idle and 51 decibels under load. So no surprises here, the temperatures are excellent. I haven't done any detailed thermal testing comparing all the different configurations because I don't expect these to be any different than my original O11 Dynamic Evo video. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to compare the differences you can get by mounting your graphics card upright, vertical, horizontal, or all the different fan configurations, you'll find those in that video.
So moving on to my experience of building in the case, and I didn't really run into any major issues in terms of building in this case. Lee and Lee do you put big stickers on the tempered glass panels, mentioning to remove the side panel before you remove the front panel. I found them pretty easy to get on and off, and the case was actually really sturdy without that front panel in place. Um, in terms of actually building in the case, um, again, mainly the only thing to watch out for is space at the bottom below the motherboard is quite limited. And the space is only meant to be 25 millimeters. The fans I've put in, because they are 120 millimeter fans, are actually 28 millimeters thick, and they do fit okay. But you do need to plug in any cables to the bottom of your motherboard before installing your fans, because once the fans are in, you're not gonna have access to those ports. I would go a step further and say, actually, make sure you bring through your PCIe cables or 12 volt type power cables for powering your graphics card before you install those bottom fans, because you are gonna struggle once the fans are in place to bring anything else through the bottom of the case. But in reality, that's the only place that things are quite tight in this case, and you've got lots of space, particularly with the panels off and the front pillar removed to build in the case. So moving on to the things I liked about the case, and the first thing I like about this case is the looks of it. Um, I really underestimated just how much having an RGB lighting bar at the bottom and the top of the case would actually make. And the effects that Lian Li have put on these RGB lighting bars with the case's built-in controller, it looks absolutely amazing. If we leave aesthetics aside for the moment, in terms of build quality, I think Lian Li have really improved this case as well. The tempered glass panels feel much thicker and better built and the mechanisms for putting them on and off is definitely better. The options for removing that front pillar makes a real difference in terms of the aesthetics, but you don't seem to lose anything in terms of the structural rigidity of the case, which is a really good achievement. Drive mounting location of the case is also really good, provided you're not gonna install any fans or radiators on the side. Although I do imagine most people will use those, but even if you do, you've still got space for up to four drives. So another thing that I really liked is that given this case is reasonably compact compared to their XL version of the case, you can still fit an awful lot of hardware in it. It's actually up to three 140 millimeter fans at the bottom, three 140 on the side, and up to a 420 millimeter radiator at the top, which is pretty impressive for a reasonably compact case like this. Moving on to the things I didn't like about the case, um, while I've just been praising the case for the fan mounting locations, I do think it's a little bit disappointing that the rear of the case were only able to fit one 120 millimeter fan, whereas the O11 Vision, we were able to fit two 120 millimeter fans at the back. And it does look like there's loads of space beneath this fan and loads of space above it. And with just a few modifications, I do think we would have been able to get two 120 millimeter fans at the rear. So although I praised the modifications Leon Lee had done with the dust filter, there was a large portion of the bottom of the case that wasn't actually covered with a dust filter. And I do think this is probably because this dust filter is reversible. You turn it around 180 degrees if you invert the case into reverse mode. And obviously the design of the dust filter was made to accommodate both standard and reverse mode with one dust filter. But it does leave a large area of the case at the bottom without any dust filtration and I would worry about dust getting into the case through this. The final thing that I found a little bit disappointing with this case is that the RGB lighting control buttons on the side of the case, the only thing that they will control is the RGB lighting strip at the top and at the bottom. And the effects on these are absolutely brilliant, and I just really wish Leon Lee had included a little RGB port at the back where you could plug additional devices in and allow them to be controlled by the buttons on the case. And I do think this was a missed opportunity. So we've now reached the stage in the review round to tell you should you go out and get this case. And in terms of the improvements that Lian Lee have made to this case compared to the original O11 Dynamic Evo, both in terms of build quality, functionality, and most importantly, aesthetics, I think it is a massive upgrade. So if you don't currently have the O11 Dynamic Evo, this would be a perfect version to get. It gets a little bit more difficult if you already have the O11 Dynamic Evo, should you upgrade to this. I think a lot of the features in terms of build quality and functionality are generally related to building in the case. And if your system is really built, you're not gonna get a big benefit from those. Where you will get a big benefit is the aesthetics and being able to remove that front pillar and have the RGB lighting bar at the bottom 
and at the top. But I don't know if that's going to be enough for me to recommend going out and upgrading from your O11 Dynamic Evo to the O11 Dynamic Evo RGB because the big benefit you're going to be getting is aesthetics. It's going to be up to you to decide if that is going to be worth paying for. If you don't have this case and you're in the market for a new case, then I can 100% recommend it. And in terms of the price you're paying, I do think you're actually getting pretty good value for money to get a case that looks this good with all the features that it offers. Um, I do think you're getting what you pay for. I think a large part of the reason this case looks so good is these new uni fans, particularly the ones that have the LCD screen on them. And I think these are going to be absolutely game changing in what you can do with the build. And I have covered setting up these fans in quite a bit of detail in my step-by-step -step build guide. So if you want to find out more about these, it is worth taking a look at that video. And I'll put a link to that video in the description. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.